that's a bass, huh? That's a slab crappie, man. It just doesn't get any better. The smallmouth here in Champlain is phenomenal. Hey guys, welcome Sunday night here. It's got to be time for another weekend roundup. Well, I hope you guys are doing good. It's a hot, sticky Sunday right here. We hope you guys are getting out and getting on some fish. Hey, I'm George, your Poker Outdoors guy, host and fellow angler. We got a great show for you guys tonight. We're going to kind of switch things up and tell you how to kind of get into your social media groove and up your game there. But before we jump into things, I introduce my, my guest tonight. Got to thank a few people. Of course, Tim Keebler over at Finseeker River Guide Service. You know, Tim gets to get out on those shad, those largemouth, smallmouth, stripers, musky, seven days a week. Book the trip of your dreams. Get on that trophy. Give Tim a call at 215-262-4811. And, of course, Tony Maja products. You know, you want to get into that 50-pound striper? Tony Maja is your guy. He's got the, the bunker spoons, the mojos, easy outriders, custom rods. He's got it all. TonyMajaProducts.com. And, of course, the Fisherman Magazine. Each week, Jim Hutchinson gives you the look ahead for the coming weekend. And you might even find me giving you a heads up with coming up here in the Poconos as well. So be sure you check out thefisherman.com for all the tips, tactics, and tackle you need to be a better fisherman. Well, you know, we got a great show lined up tonight. And like I said, I really wanted to get in and talk a little bit about the, the social media stuff. And I have a really great guest. He's a good friend of mine. We've been talking for a couple of years I want to introduce you guys to my good friend, the Shan Man, <laughs> Shannon Hernandez. Shannon, Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How about you, man? Thanks for that oh. great intro. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us tonight. Not a problem, man. It's very. Uh, I'm honored to be here on the uh, on the show. I mean, I, I watch your show and I, I see what you do, and it's great. It's great to see you uh, continuing and, and keeping with the consistency. Oh, thank you very much, Shad, man. Well, I mean, you're on radio, so I mean, what a better uh, compliment than somebody that does this professionally. Well, yeah, well, thank you. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I get a lot of feedback from people like you, so that's that's what really that's the best part about it all. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. Anyway, we want to talk a little bit about up in your social media game, and I know you're pretty much a social media guru. You're, you're a well. Let's talk about your credentials first. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, um, I'm a 21-year radio veteran out of the Phoenix, Arizona area. Uh, I've been working at a radio station called 98K UPD FM. It's a rock station. It's the premier rock station um, in the, uh, I guess would say the Southwest, but especially in Phoenix. I was listening to this radio station when uh, I was a kid. And so it was my dream to always work for uh, KUPD and uh, wasn't always like the easiest uh, story I get or the easiest thing to do to, to get to work at KUPD. There were a lot of steps that I had to take. But, um, you know, from that point forward, you know, I mean, I worked at a sister station. And then as you would probably hear in radio or anyone who works in radio, uh, you have to get fired from a radio station in order to be a real radio person. So I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I got hired on at KUPD, and that's where I have been ever since. Uh, during that time, I became a high school English teacher, um, and I, I teach people now. I teach people how to create podcasts, too. So uh, I try to use my radio knowledge and, and incorporate it into helping people with their podcasts and and develop uh, you know more skills for themselves, especially when it comes to podcasting and social media as well. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and, and what's funny is that, you know, when I was starting this entire journey and I thought to myself, you know, uh, I needed to start now a YouTube channel. I became, I started a YouTube channel so I could teach people how to do all this stuff. I started doing, um, videos that would really help people, uh, up their game really. And, 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 uh, you know, I could have done an audio podcast, but I decided on and chose YouTube just because I wanted to, um, really show the process, show them, show people like, Hey, this is how this is done. This is the more mixing board that I, I've used. And I've gone through many different processes. I think you came on one of my videos and were commenting right. on some of those things, especially when it came down to, to sponsorship. And it was funny because, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I saw you did a show that uh, talked about on getting sponsored and, and all that. And so I, I thought that was really interesting as well. Yeah, well, that kind of leads where we wanted to go today. I mean, with that show we did a few weeks ago, I actually had my sponsor on and another folks that do a podcast and they get sponsored. So you want to talk about what was involved in, you know, all right, now you're kind of working in sales for, for, for a company like this, for one of these tackle companies or whatnot. But today I wanted to kind of talk about, okay, great, you want to be part of this. How do you up your social media game? What do you do in your profile? I mean, how should you manage yourself? Uh, 
on your social media profile. So you, you will, one, will get recognized by a company. And secondly, even if you're a great fisherman, they look at your profile and go, ooh, never mind. So that's kind of right. what I want to lean on you a little bit with your expertise. And what can we share with the folks on that? Right. Yeah. Social media is such a, it's an interesting topic because uh, it has evolved over the course of the last, you know, 10 years um, where, you know, when I was, I started out with social media using MySpace and it was just like this thing that you went on and you had fun with people and, and uh, you met with your friends and uh, that was really what it was all about. But then when Facebook kind of started taking over and Twitter uh, became a thing, um, the idea of social media marketing became more of a thing. And so we started to see that people were sharing uh, the things that they were passionate about and the things that they really loved and sharing those ideas with other people in order to get business is what it was or a sponsorship or make money online. And at the time, it was a very, um, how would you say, it was just, it was so new to people because the process of selling hadn't changed other than the modality of how you used it. So you, instead of going into a store and buying a vacuum cleaner, now you are buying a vacuum cleaner on an Amazon, you know, right. I mean, this is many years later, of course, but you, you could just go onto Amazon and buy a vacuum cleaner. And then when it came down to trainings and coaching, you didn't have to go to a weekend seminar to do this. You could just do it on a webinar and you could start earning clients that way. So social media really evolved over the course of the years. And, um, you have two sets of people who utilize social media. You use people who are consumers, and then you use you let you have people who are uh, the producers. And so the producers really got an idea on how to utilize social media to a gather a following, and of course to get uh, you know some type of uh, of business in some way. And that's really where um, I have taken a, a keen interest in helping podcasters, um, you know, especially it doesn't matter the niche really, because um, my expertise and my, uh, my career has allowed me to say like, Oh, well, this is what we do in radio. And this is now what they're doing in podcasting. So whether you are uh, into hot rods, or you are into fishing, uh, you have to understand the rules and the game of social media in order to get people to come down uh, and buy something from you, which it, which they would call probably the sales funnel is what it would be. So we can really kind of start from the very beginning of where that all starts out. So let's say that you have your own channel, kind of like you, George, you have your own channel on fishing and uh, you, you know, I've seen you week in, week out, you stay consistent with your message. You have sponsors. Now I'm sure that when it came down to getting sponsors, uh, there was probably a little bit of a, uh, a trust factor that, uh, your sponsors had to kind of believe in what you were doing, but also sure. there was probably a, somewhere down the lines, you know, there was a, a friendship that, that budded there. And there was also, um, this process where you built something that people could trust and they could trust you and your sponsors came on and they said, Oh yeah, well, you know, not only do you probably have uh, download numbers and views, but, um, you know, we would like to get our name out there so that people can come to our shop. And so it was a very, I, I don't know how that process went down for you, but I would imagine that's kind of where you went in order to get that, that, that client or the clients that you currently do have. Sure. Sure. It was so, a, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you're right. It's, it's something you, you build over a little bit of time. It doesn't, you don't wake up one morning and there's an email in your box saying, Hey, you're my new, you know, <laughs> I'm your new sponsor, by the way, it takes some work. It takes some trust. It's some conversation and it certainly does build a friendship, you know, uh, coming right. out of it. Before mm -hmm. we get on too far, there's a couple of guys join us here. I want to say uh, hello to Jen Wong. Join us from uh, Facebook. Thank you. Hi, Jen. How you doing? Uh, Jay Batcha, uh, Art Begley, and Chris Pitcher join us. Thank you very much, guys. Good to see you on the show here today. Yeah. I uh, hope you guys are uh, enjoying some of this social media talk. I know pretty much all you guys are are active in social media, so mm -hmm. hopefully you get some tips out of all this. Yeah. So I hope that I can share at least something that will help them take away and start implementing for themselves. So, and I see Matt price just popped in as well. Yeah. So Matt, good Matt to see price you is from Australia. So matter of fact, he's our guest next week. So if you guys oh. know of Matt price, uh, <laughs> world record holder, we're going to be talking to Matt next week. So stay Very tuned cool. for that one. Very cool. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, if we were to, I guess, transition and really kind of start from the very uh, ground level of where this all starts in your social media, um, I guess we could talk really about like kind of where my story started on social media and and I guess how that really kind of parallels to what you are doing as 
um, a podcaster and with your own social media and what you're doing. So uh, back in 2000, when I got hired on with uh, the radio station here in Phoenix, uh, social media was not a big thing. And I was one of the first ones to start jumping on the social media train. I thought to myself, well, you know, this is a really great way to get more people engaged in what I'm doing on the radio. I could get them to come in and not feel as though they have to call a phone number through a studio line just to get a hold of the DJ and get the request played on the radio or get the, a shout out on the radio. This was just kind of bypassing that entire process. Social media just became that method that I was using to get people to start listening to me because it was so new and people were like, wow, this is crazy. I can't believe this guy actually read my message on right. a computer and said it over the airwaves for the entire city to hear. And so I started doing that. And I think in the beginning, um, it, it was met with some skepticism uh, and people were not really keen to the idea that I was doing this because they wanted ratings numbers. And so I was like, no, I understand that you want ratings numbers, but we can really nurture uh, both social media and uh, on air airwaves uh, in order to get people to really trust us, know us, like, like us and trust us. And that's really what I was kind of going for was the sure. no like and trust factor. So as the years started to pass, more people at the radio station started to build upon that. And they're like, oh, wow, he's doing this and he's doing that. And uh, he's communicating on Twitter. And they would make fun of me. And they're like, oh, you're using Twitter. And uh, what that's ridiculous. And eventually, down the line, there was a, uh, a group of people who called themselves the Shan Man Army. <laughs> and they all wanted to meet up. And they, at the time, it was something called Tweet Ups. And... Uh, we would go out and we would meet up at like a restaurant or a bar and we would all convene and we would get together and we would commune together as a group of people who had a common interest, which was me and the radio station. And that really built up that no like and trust factor. Now, over the course of the years since I've been doing this, I've maintained that over the course of the years. You know, I started a Facebook channel or a Facebook page and I started, uh, you know, utilizing that to get communicate with people where I fell short and what's and where I wish I would have taken this to the next level would have been starting a website for myself in some way, shape or form. And this didn't come until way later. And I wanted to start a website to where I was sharing value. And so this is where we jump into the whole social media game. Social media is really more about that no, no like and trust factor. And so when we're building content, say, for example, with your channel about fishing, um, every week, week in, week out, you're sharing nothing but uh, free tips and you're sharing guests who are giving out free tips uh, that really reinforced and strengthened your brand because people can come to you and say like, oh, I know that George is going to be giving me the best information when it comes down to his podcast, because he's not only going to share it in a podcast, but he's also going to be producing it and putting something out onto social media saying, hey, um, you know, here's a clip from my show that talks about and, you know, you could name whatever whatever topic you want there, insert it there. And then, of course, move on and move forward. You're just sharing this consistent value that is on social media. So whether it be news articles, whether it be quotes from your guests from your show that you share on your social media with a link that goes back to your website to listen to your podcast of that particular episode, all these pieces of information that you're creating with one piece of content, which would be your podcast, could be repurposed and broken down into little pieces and promotional pieces that people can get an idea of like what you're doing. So they, they know they, they know they can trust your content to be of value if it's a, something that is of interest to them. Right. So that's, this, that's this also kind of why I bring on guests like you. I mean, we're talking about media and what better than the shame man, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but, you know, this this concept is not new. It's not really new at all. In fact, if anyone is familiar with uh, the entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, um, he has this uh, concept and th this philosophy called uh, of creating pillar content. And you would have one big piece of content that would be, say, your podcast or this right here. And from that one big piece of content, you can break it down into multiple pieces of content. So whether you're doing fishing, whether you're doing hot rodding, whether you're doing uh, wood turning, whatever it may be, you can create something so big that it, it's broken down into these small little bite-sized pieces that can be shared out onto social media through an Instagram, through a Twitter, through a Facebook. And it's all pushing back to your website so people can learn more about you. So when you build this pillar content and you're building 
out and trying to figure out, well, should I get a sponsor for my podcast? Should I get a sponsor for my show? Um, there's going to be a number of factors that are going to come into it. Do you, you know, number one, do you have the downloads for all of this? Number two, uh, you know, do you have the viewership that is going to be viewing all this stuff? And you really have to kind of assess that before you go out and look for a sponsor. Now, I don't know how it worked with you and your sponsors. I would imagine that uh, there was some mutual understanding of how you got your uh your sponsors but there's obviously a mutual understanding of like saying they these are the amount of people that are going to get eyes on your brand during my show so uh this is what we're going to be working with and this is what we will try to do to to improve on those numbers and how can it apply to you exactly. now i don't know what i don't know whether or not that those those sponsors on your show have gotten calls from out of state on you know getting different pieces of equipment from that shop specifically because they trusted it on your show it may have happened, right? It may so, be true. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it could have happened. And that's where I think the beauty of social media um, and social media marketing and marketing your business and getting these sponsorships for your show uh, can really help out, especially if you're very, very passionate. So I think the first thing that we got to think about when it comes down to you and the thing that you're passionate about, you have to pick the thing that you are ultimately really good at knowing. So you know, I, I really struggled with the idea of, of starting my own channel about podcasting because I thought, well, there's a million other people who are talking about podcasting, but I knew that I wanted to start podcasting because I was a broadcaster already. And I, I mean, this is already what I did and I loved it. I already loved doing it. So this is what I knew how to do. My cousin in Colorado, he, and the reason why I continue to bring up hot rodding is because he builds hot rods and he recently just started a YouTube channel, uh, bad ombre, uh, I'm sorry, bad ombre uh, garage. And he uh, chronicles on his social media, especially on Instagram, the story of how he's building or rebuilding a hot rod from the ground up. And oh, that to cool. me is fascinating because you're watching him start the journey and he's documenting it all on Instagram and he's documenting the entire thing on YouTube as well. So if you get a chance, go check out Bad Ombre Garage on YouTube, and you can see that he does this whole chronicling of, of building a hot rod. And you know, and he'll say like, oh, I'm taking a break. I'm going up to my dad's house. We're going to go check out his cars that he's built over the past years and, and how we've refined them. So he's really telling a story and building this, this no like and trust factor by telling the story of like, hey, you know, this, this truck does not have proper seating. I'm going to show you how to create a seat that will fit within this particular truck. I mean, he's got it down uh, to his own per uh, particular science. So you got to be really passionate about you, what you do. Then the sponsors will start coming because then he'll start seeing people like, uh, you know, from different hot rod magazines say like, Hey, can you mention our hot rod magazine on your particular YouTube channel? We see sure. that you get a number of, of, of uh, views for that. So it's got to really start with your passion. And I think that's the first step. It's really starting with a passion and finding that niche, that niche that's really going to uh, define you for what you know how to do. So like you, George, you know how to fish and I'm sure there's different ways uh, um, that, you know, different strategies that you use to, um, you know, capture fish, but it's your way. It's not someone else's way, or maybe you've taken some uh, maybe strategies from someone else and, and made them into your own. That's where I think a lot of people miss the mark. They feel as though like, well, this has already been done. Well, maybe it has been done, but maybe there's something that's a little bit different that you do than exactly. someone else, you know, like anyone who, who flies drones, some people will fly a drone and they'll say, well, this is the way I do it. But other people will be like, no, that's not how I do that. This is the way I do it. And you just got to kind of find a way in which it fits your mold. So you got to realize that there are people out there that, um, are just like you. They're just like you and they will buy into whatever it is that you are um, sharing because they understand your philosophy more. That's really kind of where it starts. So you got to find that niche and you got to be willing to understand that people are looking to either get educated or entertained. So you got to continue to share that out. Like I said with my cousin, he not only entertains, but he educates people on how he built uh, hot rods. All right? right. So then I think from that next step is really, you got to go in and it's going to be a hard thing for, um, a lot of people who are starting their own YouTube channel is that you got to build a website because if you're going to be promoting on social media and you're going to be sharing this big pillar piece of content into smaller pieces of content, you want to push them to your website. So you got to have a solid website. That's going to share a little more of who you are. It's going to be a little more of who your personality is. And so you go down that line. 
Now I want to take a step back and talk about like the social media. Now it doesn't, your social media doesn't always have to be like, Oh, I'm sharing everything about fishing. I'm sharing everything about, um, you know, uh, gear and all that. It can be also about you and it can add this human side to you. Uh, my radio station or, or my particular Instagram page, you've seen it, George. Yep. My channel is not all about radio. It's sunsets. I share sunsets from Arizona. Uh, I share, maybe sometimes I'll share like me in the studio or me here at home recording something, or maybe I'm sharing an exercise routine. Like that just makes me who I am. That just adds a whole other layer of who I am on top of the guy who is the podcaster. So it's, it's, I think anyone who is doing some type of, of, uh, you know, production value behind their 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 niche they have to realize they have to be human as well and i think that's where a lot of people miss the mark they they don't add that human element so i utilize youtube as my big pillar piece of content and then i utilize twitter instagram and facebook as the secondary tertiary uh, and I don't even know what you, the, the fourth one is but you you get where i'm going you, yep. i use those all as a means to nurture and get people to understand who I am. They know that I love podcasting, but there's also, I love, I love music. I love rock music, but I also love, uh, you know, I love chill out music. I love country music. I love different styles of music and I'll share that with people. And then when the time comes and they have known me and they like me and they trust me, it's all, it almost works like clockwork. There's always someone that comes back to me and says, I know you teach about podcasting. Where can I find that information? And that just starts that whole process. Sure. So you're just nurturing people constantly and consistently. Just this last week, um, we had I had I made a post on my personal Facebook page uh, because we've been here in Arizona. We are dealing with uh, the coronavirus uh, surge, and it's a uh, it's pretty bad here in Arizona. And so um, personally, I know that there's people who have who have it right now. George and I were just talking about this. I have a friend of mine. Um, you know, we pray that he is doing well. He's not doing. He's, he's in a pretty bad shape right now and it's very tough, but I made posts on social media, letting people know you like, please can, you know, kind of do your part to at least to, to at least help something, you know, because we don't want to see anyone uh, feel hurt. And so I'm adding this element of just who I am as far as where my perspective is, whether you agree with it or you don't agree with it, that's really kind of up to you. But people will know that, uh, Oh, uh, he has a human side to him. And in one of these posts that I made, I talked about how I was not going out, especially here in Arizona. I'm not going out. And I made this list and I wrote it out. And it was basically all of the text messages and phone calls that I've gotten from people wanting to hang out or wanting me to do something. And one of those happened to be about podcasting. And I said, you know, if you want me to really help you with your podcast, I have a YouTube channel, which I kind of intentionally, I know I kind of intentionally put it out there saying like, I have a YouTube channel that talks nothing but podcasting. Well, believe it or not, I started seeing people subscribing to my YouTube channel at that point. Good. Now, whether or not they are going to take on the the idea of creating a podcast, I know there there's some interest that happens to be there. So we have to remember when we're marketing on social media that we have to send them to one area or another. We're just kind of we're just trying to get them and hit them all these all little touch points. So that's really kind of where we go when it comes down to social media marketing. It's all about building the content and then circulating it to eventually where they're reaching you on a website to take that relationship and go a little further. Right. Yeah. Exactly. But I, I'm going to go over a couple of a quick tips and I'm going to kind of like throw some things at you and I want to get your feedback on them. Um, just for the guys that let, let's say they're just starting with it with a, just, let's say just a Facebook page okay. and, and they're looking to kind of build their social media presence. And uh, we'll, we'll go through a couple of these real quick. Let's talk about a positive, a positive post, you know, keeping things positive, avoiding negativity. What's your, what's your feelings on that? Yeah. I mean, uh, anything that has to deal with positivity and having an, uh, how would I put it? Because I do this all the time. I try to put a positive spin on things regardless of kind of like what's going on in the world. Um, I try to remind my audience when I, I post something, whether it be about podcasting or radio or music or anything like that. I try to say like, yeah, even though we are in the situations that we're in and we're in difficult times, let's remind ourselves of this and let's remind ourselves of like, well, here are the good things that are happening in the world today, you know, and like I know, like, for instance, for like right now, positive posts, um, they do really well. Uh, on my social media, because I think I have nurtured the audience enough to know that I'm not going to just look at the bad. I will recognize that there are challenges. I don't look at things as bad. I look at the things I look at things in the world as challenges. And and if I can see those challenges as being something that can be overcome, 
then I'll take on the challenge. Uh, I never see it as being bad. So I don't look at like a whole lot being being like bad. I just go, okay, well, that's a challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge that I have to stay home. So what can I do within that challenge? What can I, how can I step up and Make become a positive? What, yeah. how, what can we do? Yeah. Yeah. So it's always taking that next step forward. What can we do to make it better? You yeah. know, and then if there's something that negative come that's negative that comes up, maybe sometimes I'll address it and maybe sometimes I won't. Um, but I always look at it this way. If someone has something that's really crappy to say on my social media, um, and it's 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 downright vindictive, I just block them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as it goes. And that's actually one of my topics. I want I know we've talked about this because we both had them. I mean, haters. I mean, you get people yeah. that just out of nowhere, they're sitting there in their dark basement, keyboard warriors that just got to, got to get you, you know, what's, what's your take on that Chad? Yeah. I look at these guys. I mean, I just kind of, it's like the equivalent of them just living in their mom's basement, just being, you know, backseat quarterbacks is what it is. You know, they're yeah. just taking a, taking a step back. I just look at it this way. If you have enough energy to sit back and start uh, commenting and making negative posts, then really, why are you not putting that energy into doing it right the way that you feel it's right, you know? Sure. And so um, I just kind of look at those people as like, um, I don't look at them as lost souls at all. I just kind of look at them as uh, they are not, uh, they are not taking an active role in their own life. That's yeah. all it is. They just do not take an active role in their life. They would much rather, uh, judge from a distance, you know? So I would imagine like with you, George, I mean, I know your YouTube channel has a lot of uh, subscribers and I would imagine that there are some people who come in and they, they have something really crappy to say. And, and, yep. and, and then after a while, you're just kind of like, well, you know what, if you have something that, that you don't like about my channel, why are you here? <laughs> yeah. I, I <laughs> you know? took your advice with that. I mean, there's, there's a block button and yeah. you, you know, I usually go to say, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I go, let me shoot over to their YouTube page. Wait, there's no videos. Let me go to yeah. their Facebook page. Well, there's no real post. It's just a bunch of memes. Yeah. Just block them people. You don't need them in your life. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly what it is. Like you made a great point. It's you see them on, um, like I get a lot of YouTube haters that come on my channel and they're like, Oh, you're doing this wrong. And then I go to their channel and there's like no videos. It's just, it's a, it's a avatar of like a record, you know, right. and it's just nothing there. And it's like, okay, mister, I have no videos and you know, I'm not going to take advice from someone who has no, nothing to show for it. Like right. if, if it was someone who had something to show for it, then I'd be like, Oh, well then, okay. Maybe, maybe he's work. good. Maybe I'll learn something, you know? Yeah. But I'm not going to take it from some guy who's not doing anything with it. You know, sure. come back to me in six months and start a YouTube channel. Then we can talk about that negative comment, you know? Right. Yeah. Another thing I want to touch on too is, and I know you talk about this in one, one of your podcasts, uh, when you're doing posts, it's kind of like picture quality. And like you talk about this when you're doing thumbnails and stuff for, for your podcast, maybe just quickly, if you can touch on that a little bit, because I know like one of the things we have here, you see, especially if you're going to get sponsored guys, this is important. You always go, you know, you're scrolling through your feed and here's that guy. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, no shirt on big old beer gut. He's got a Budweiser in one hand, a bass in the other. I'm going to tell you what, that's not going to work for a sponsor. You know, you yeah. got to, your picture quality has really got to be up there. Yeah. I would say that, I mean, there's the thing is George, we live in an age right now where you can, I mean, you can learn about anything at the, the tap of a finger. I mean, you can learn directly from your phone these days. And right. if that means that, you know, I mean, you can use something as simple as your iPhone, you know, that's, that's how this is right now. You can use something as simple as your iPhone because an iPhone now has the ability for you to create photos where it looks like it was taken with a, you know, high quality camera and maybe exactly. not exactly like a DSLR camera, but it can look pretty close, you know, yep. pretty close to it. And I've seen a lot of YouTubers use just their phone. When I go to my own little marketing conferences, people are like, you know, take quality photos. If you're going to create a thumbnail on YouTube for your video podcast, make sure that the video podcast is high quality and it shares what the video is going to be talking about, or maybe expresses some type of curiosity for the viewer who's going to look at it. If you're going to create podcast artwork, make sure you're getting quality, you know, like you said, you don't want to be sitting there with a, a bass and a Budweiser with a cigarette right. hanging out and you got pizza stains all over your shirt. You don't want that. 
You know, I mean, you want to be able to be presentable, like you're trusted. And I mean, think about all the, right. the super successful guys who are doing this. They are all showing that they have reached the end of the journey. You know, they've right. reached that end of that journey where um, they have caught the big bass or they have competed and, you know, they didn't need all that other stuff. They've actually shown that they have taken their craft serious. Right. That's really what it's about. I, I agree. Now, say somebody that's doing all the right stuff here, Shannon. They, you know, they're 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 out there taking the great picks. They're positive. They're they're very active. What's the next step? Like, say they want say they want to get into a podcast. Um, what what suggestions do you have for them? Yeah, well, I would first say that uh, if you are looking to get into a podcast, you've got to figure out exactly what are you passionate about. Don't say like I just want to do a podcast. You know. What is it that you're passionate about? And I and you're going to hear this a lot from people. If you decide if I'm your first point of contact that you're hearing this from and then you go down and you start doing some research, you're going to hear everyone talk about the same thing. Find your passion. Find the one thing that you're good at. If you're good at fishing, if you are good at knitting, if you are great at woodworking, find that passion and then think about all the ways in which you started or how you started getting involved in that particular niche say like with woodworking what did you need to do how did you start out well maybe you just started out with a two by four and you know some little tools and you ended up whittling down a piece of wood and that was what it was i mean and then you're like well i need to use different wood i need to research so i would say find the niche that you're really into and then if you want to start say like a podcast you should probably be coming up with uh, topics that start people from the beginning of the journey and then take them all the way down to what the end of the journey can look like. Because right. the way we consume content online versus how we consume it on TV is more about consuming it to learn and see how someone else did it as opposed to just being entertained. Right. So you can teach someone how to do something and then you can kind of move forward from that, that direction and then create I would say, you know, if you can't do 52 topics, I would say 26. That would be six months worth of content to create a podcast over the course of six months. That's an hour long or maybe even 30 minutes long. And, you know, interview other people who have done gone down that road or talk about your m methodology or your philosophy behind why you would turn. I mean, right. that's really going to capture more uh, listeners than just doing a podcast about absolutely nothing. Because we have to think in terms of how we search for things on a uh, a search engine like Google and how we look for things in YouTube. That's how people are finding stuff. That's what people are looking for. So that's the little secret behind doing all this is that you got to do things that you got to create things that people are looking for. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, it, it, it's that's the way you get started. I mean, that's that next level you got to get to. And if you're really passionate about it, it in, in anything like fishing and such, take that next step, go that extra mile. And it really will pay off in the end. I say, if your goal is getting a sponsorship or, or whatever it is that you have in mind, don't be afraid to go for it, make the commitment and just, just really do it. Uh, Shannon, sure. for those, those folks that um, would like to start a podcast, I think you're probably one of the best resources out there for it. How can folks get a hold of you if they want to uh, tap into your knowledge? Yeah, well, yeah, you uh, you can always head up my my YouTube channel. That's where I post all my videos. Um, just go to uh, YouTube and just type in the name Shannon Hernandez, and that you'll be able to find me. You'll be able to see the guy with the long hair looking up. <laughs> so uh, you can find me there. And uh, of course, if you want to take that uh, relationship a little bit deeper with me, you can always go to my website. Uh, it's just theshanman.com. The links are all in my YouTube. You can find it. I have equipment guides of what you can use. Um, it's just uh, suggested equipment that I say that you can start with a podcast. And then from there, I just take you down the journey of what it will take for you to start your podcast and get it up and running so that you, you can start creating quality content and getting your name out there so you can have your own sponsors on your own podcast. Yeah, with, without a doubt. Guys, uh, Shannon's been probably one of the best resources for me. We've been friends for a couple of years, and I've certainly tapped into that knowledge once or twice, I would say. But uh, you've been really great over the years, and I appreciate your help there, uh, Shannon. Thank you. It, it's very appreciated. I appreciate you, George. <laughs> so thank you, sir. Well, you know what, Shannon? We, we got to kind of move on with the show here. I'd like you to hang sure. around, but yeah. we're going to take a, a look at a couple of the um, the things the folks have been doing out catching some fish. So it's actually time to get into what we call the trophy board. <laughs> All right. So this week we got um, young Beckham Cross out with a five-pound bass he caught <laughs> in a local pond here. That's a great job there. It's Beckham. almost as big as he is. <laughs> I know. Isn't that great? <laughs> also, we got Easton Schwamm. He got a couple of beautiful fish here at a local pond. Great job, Easton. Uh, 
Brian Downs, he was on the Delaware River down by Bucks County, and he got into a really nice uh, striper here. They're still running good in the Delaware, guys. You're probably going to have a couple weeks yet before they, they head south, but still some nice stripers in the Delaware. Ryan Swoop got his first muskie. Wow. And I believe this was up on the Delaware, too. How's that for, for a nice Look fish? Yeah, yeah, that thing's got some teeth, too, but what a first muskie. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Nick Pashi also got up on the Delaware near Trenton, got his uh, a nice striper up there on a four inch storm shed. Way to go there, Nick. Great that, catch. Yeah. yeah. Now we got Mark Hines here with a really, really nice bass. I mean, it looks kind of like a five, maybe a six pounder. He put that on a scale 7.07 .07 pounds. Oh, wow. Holy cow, <laughs> Mark, that's a beast. Congratulations on that. That beats yeah. my PB. I only got about a six and a half pounder, so he's got me beat. And finally, we got Ash, Asher Mertz out with his first smallmouth on the Delaware River out that by guy. Delaware Water Gap. Congratulations, Asher. That's a great fish. Yeah. Awesome stuff this week, guys. I really appreciate. Please always send in those pictures. We'd love to see them. You can just send them to me here on Facebook, or uh, you can email me at PoconoGeorge at Outlook.com. Always love to see them. And don't forget, we got that contest going on with Tim Keebler. Uh, all you got to do, remember, we got uh, it's a free guided trip on the Delaware for the fish of your choice. So if you want to go out for a shad or the muskie, the stripers, whatever, all you got to do is email me at PoconoGeorge at Outlook.com. Put contest in the subject line. Tell me your name and what you want to fish for. And on July 26th, Sunday, we'll make the drawing live right here on the show and see if you can win a free trip with Tim Keebler. So be sure you guys stay tuned for that. Now that's going to bring up our weekly trivia giveaway. So the question we have this week and what we're going to be giving away is a free gift or tip for a one-year subscription to the Fisherman Magazine. That's 38 issues, all the tips, tactics, and tackle you need to be a better fisherman. It's a free subscription. You guys can't beat it. It's the best deal in town. But the question this week is, tuna are incredible swimmers. What is the highest known speed to be reached by a tuna? Is it 42 miles an hour, 62 miles an hour, or 76 miles an hour? Who's going to give me the uh, the right answer this week and get this I mean, free I, gift certificate? I would answer, but then that would kind of defeat the point of yeah, people. Yeah, I think we got to <laughs> let the guys do that, Shannon. What do you think? I think they should do it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> 42, 62, or 76 miles an hour. Who's going to give me an answer? Jen, 76. No, Jen, sorry, not this week. Come on, I'm still looking for the right answer. Uh-oh. I know this is, I make it multiple choice, but it's still, John Augustine says Mach 2. I know they feel like they're going <laughs> Mach 2 when they're, when you have a <laughs> Jay, no, I'm sorry. It's not 42. Come on. There's one answer left. You guys got it. Tim Keebler's got it. All righty. <laughs> Way to go, Tim. Actually, 62 miles an hour is what they're yeah. known. Now, you know, the uh, they, they have the ability to uh, change the position of their fins and their pectoral fins so they can get a real big burst of speed. 62 miles. Can you imagine going on a turnpike and a, tu and a tuna goes by? That's I true. couldn't even imagine that. That's crazy. They're just That's well, crazy. You know, uh, John Augustine says Mach 2, and believe me, when they're on the line, they do feel like they're going that fast. So that's a great stuff, guys. Well, you know, that's kind of like bringing things up to the end of the show. I hope you guys had a great time. I got to thank my, my real good friend, Shannon Hernandez, for joining us. As always, it's great talking to you, buddy. I hope you had a good time as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me, George. It was a pleasure. And, uh, you know, I, I, we could talk more if, if you ever need me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we will. I, I think there's lots to talk about. And we'll probably have it back on again. So I hope you guys had a great time. Always enjoy having you out. Again, got to thank Tim Keebler at Finn Seeker Guide Service. Be sure you book your, your trip with Tim right now. 215-262-4811. Uh, Tony Maja Products, The Fisherman Magazine, bunch of great guys. Be sure you get out and support them. And email me. Send me those pics. We'd love to hear from you at PoconoGeorge at Outlook.com. And that's going to wrap up our show for this week. Hope to see you next week. we got a great show lined up, too. We'll talk to you soon and have a great weekend. What do you say, Shannon? Let's wrap it up. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, guys. Thanks for showing we'll up. See, we'll see you next time.